Now, joining us from Virginia is Adam Kokesh. He is a American activist and talk radio host. AdamVersusTheMan.com is his news website. And uh, I saw up on DrudgeReport.com about an hour ago, and we'll punch that up on screen, uh, the headline, radio host who lead a armed march on D.C. July 4th to put government on notice that we won't be intimidated, and that is CNS News. Now, they plan to march from Virginia to the bridge, and here to give us specific details first, uh, here on the Alex Jones Show, uh, is Adam Kokesh. Uh, again, a longtime guest of this broadcast. I can count him as a friend. And he's done a lot of other big uh, political events. Uh, they say there's no free speech allowed in D.C. I've had him tell me no cameras allowed even on the mall. Adam's gone out famously and danced at a monument and been arrested for that. Uh, slammed to the ground, brutalized. I got to say this. He is a Marine Corps veteran of Iraq and Fallujah, and he has a lot of courage. I have never done this. People have asked me to do this many times. I've never done it because I'm concerned they'll send in provocateurs and stage something to demonize gun owners. I believe in open carry. I believe we have the right to do it. Doing it around the nation has really shown that there is a right to keep and bear arms. A lot of people don't even think there is a Second Amendment. But I got to tell you, Adam, I'm worried about you. I'll probably come or send a reporter to this. Uh, you've got serious, uh, you know, you know, serious uh, guts to do this. Uh, because I know what the establishment's capable of, and I also know you always do what you say you're going to do. So, Adam Kakesh, tell us, tell us what's happening and tell us what you're planning. Alex, thank you so much for having me on, and thank you so much for, for being supportive of this. I know it's an issue that's very near and dear to you and so many of your audience, and it's very important that we stand up. And I think this is the time. People have gotten to the end of their ropes, and they're saying, this is it. We're going to put it on the line. We're going to see what happens. And if anything, this event is quite subtle, really the subtlest way possible that we could assert our right to be armed as human beings. And this really goes to the heart of the gun control issue. Is it about guns or is it about control? And what we're going to be doing is gathering at the National Cemetery on Independence Day in the morning and mustering into a formation. We hope to make sure that this is done in the safest and most visible and obvious way possible. And if I have to personally inspect every single individual carrying in that formation to ensure that that's what it is, that's what's going to happen. We will only invite individuals, at least who are not law enforcement officers, to be there with only a rifle or a shotgun slung across their back where their hands are not anywhere near it. And it can be made completely clear that they are coming in peace while asserting their right to be armed. We are going to march across the bridge, the Memorial Bridge, into the District of Columbia, where open carry is not permitted, march down Independence Avenue around the Capitol, around the Supreme Court, and then up Pennsylvania Avenue, around the White House, back down to Constitution Avenue, and back peacefully to Virginia. What I'm going to be doing is co coordinating with law enforcement. My recommendation to them is that they give us a, an escort, and they allow us to conduct our march peacefully in an orderly manner and make it clear why we are there. There. However, should they decide to say that we will not be welcome in the District of Criminals, Mortar on the Potomac, we will make it clear to the country and to the world that free people are not welcome in the, in the, in the, in the capital of what is supposed to be the freest nation on earth, which we know to not be true now for many, many years, and yet so many Americans seem to labor under this illusion. And just recently, Speaking in Mexico, incidentally, President Obama said, I think many of you know that in America, our Constitution guarantees our individual right to bear arms. And as president, I swore an oath to uphold that right, and I always will. Well, we're going to find out on Independence Day 2013 whether President Obama and the law enforcement officers that enforce his will in the District of Columbia are oath keepers or oath breakers, and whether they're actually going to stand up for the Constitution and the Second Amendment to which they swore an oath. Should there be any meeting of physical resistance, I have declared that at least for myself, and I will ask everybody who is attending as a free individual to follow the same principles, that if we are going to be confronted physically, we are not going to physically challenge anyone. We are not going to cause any harm. We are going to conduct a peaceful event. And should we be confronted by law enforcement, even to the point of meeting physical resistance, if they do not create an immediate threat to life and limb, we will submit to the uh, physical will 
of the government as it represents what it does today and hope that we can reach out to those behind it. We can reach out to those who think that they should be able to affect the actions of others through the coercion of government rather than the persuasion that we as libertarians hold superior. And we are going to find out where this country stands come this Independence Day. Now, Adam, what about the concern that I raised that the media is going to try to spin this, that it's an armed revolt against uh, Mordor on the Potomac uh, or you know, kind of like the North Korean capital where only the government can be armed? Uh, I understand you know, you're doing this to exercise the fact that we do have a Second Amendment and that the Supreme Court's even ruled that they can't keep people from owning guns in D.C., but still... Uh, the district has not complied with the Supreme Court. So I understand historically you're in the right, but what about Lou Rockwell, the Von Mies Institute, libertarian icon, we all know him well, who was on earlier. He thinks this is a very bad idea. I get why you're doing it. I know you're a good guy. I support you yourself. I just know that this is like a present to a lot of provocateurs. How do you stop them from sending in a mentally ill person or somebody they've set up uh, to try to demonize the entire uh, Second Amendment movement. I mean, obviously, justice be done, may the heavens fall, but, uh, you know, that's not your problem, that's not my problem, but you've obviously thought that through. Alex, this is an armed revolt against the American government. Make no mistake about it. That does not change the nature of the event, and that does not change the fact that every criticism leveled against what we are planning to do would be true of any act of resistance, of any open protest, of any act of rebellion. And to say, well, there are potential negative consequences as an excuse to cower before government does not strike me as something that would be said by someone who cares about risking what they hold dear to, to, to achieve what we hold most dear, and that is the liberty that is supposed to be a core value of this nation. And it's, it's really disgusting to see that there are those who would use the exact same tactics that they are saying are potentials in order to, uh, to, to derail this effort that, oh, somebody might say something bad about this, so we're going to say something bad about it now. And I, I heard the criticism from uh, the, the esteemed Mr. Rockwell suggesting that we have a peaceful event. We are having a peaceful event. And that, you know, we should be saying that. No, we I get what you're saying. Let me stop happy. you. You're saying, as a libertarian principle, it's whoever initiates the violence first. I get it. It's like Lexington and Concord, you know, hold your fire, don't shoot unless shot at, but, you know, stand your ground. If they mean to have a war, let them have it. And then you say this is an armed revolt. I say the government's illegitimate. Uh, it's violating Absolutely. our rights, but I mean, why are you calling it a armed revolt? Because that idea in law has the connotation of you're going to be revolting with arms. I mean, I, I don't think having arms with you is the definition of revolting with arms. I think it, it, it signifies you're saying you were exercising the right to be armed. Well, you could split the terms there. I believe we are revolting with arms. And, and as you, I, I know personally, you are armed and you believe in this. And I would say that you are in revolt as well. And, and we saw the report just last week of the survey that 29% of Americans believe an armed revolt will be necessary in the, for, for a revolution in the next few years. Well, for those Americans who see that it is potentially necessary, I have some news for you. It's already happening. It's already begun. And if you think that we are not in the midst of a revolution, I would ask you to simply look around and look just ever so slightly past the mainstream media narrative to question what's really going on and see that there are people in this country who are facing violence at the hands of government. There are people worse all over the world, all over the planet. No, I agree. Government, government run by special interests is the problem. But, uh, I mean, what you're saying here is right in the historical context. I think Lou Rockwell is concerned because undoubtedly uh, this will probably not end well. I admire everybody that's going to be there. Uh, this is something obviously that I'm not going to probably be able to miss. Uh, I'm going to probably need to come to this. I mean, it's just duty you know, states that that's what has to be done to cover it as a media person. My issue is that they undoubtedly don't have a choice. They're going to try to spin this against you. You know, people at first said I was wrong to blow up at Piers Morgan and say, look, 1776 will commence again. But within the days that came after it, people realized, no, it was a victory and that it was a defining moment uh, in the defeat of the gun grabbers. Many analysts have said this. 
because it called them out. Hey, you're illegitimate. You don't have a right to take our guns. You want to enslave us. And if you try, it's going to cause a civil war. That throwing down the gauntlet ended their, their creeping fascism. I'm just saying that uh, if a couple thousand people show up and this actually happens, uh, this is going to be historical. <laughs> what else do you want to add on this uh, whole front, uh, Adam Kokesh? Well, I want to make it clear that we are doing everything possible to ensure that this event stays nonviolent. We are going to be coordinating with law enforcement, and should they not give us a concrete answer as to what their actions are going to be, and I have to be the first one to cross that bridge by myself, then that's what I'm going to do. And I think enough people know from my past that I have the credibility to do what I'm going to say, as, as you attest, and I'm greatly uh, appreciative of, of your endorsement in that, Mr. Jones. And, and I w I'm very much looking forward to seeing you there on Independence Day, not just as a reporter, but as a participant as I know you will be in one form or another. And also, I'd like people to know that we are inviting everyone who would like to come, who would not like to risk arrest, who would not like to be armed, to join us as well. If there are any supporters who would like to come unarmed, you'll be welcome to fall in at the back of the formation, should you choose. Although we might, it seems now, have far too many who are actually caring and, and restrict the formation just to that. But this is going to be an historic event. This is the showdown of 2013. We are going to put it on the line, and we're going to see if Obama's going to live up to his words or not i can think of no better way than than, than doing this and it's, it's just there there are those who are willing to cower who will say that there's no time for confrontation and there are those of us who will say no i am going to stand up i am going to assert my rights i'm going to make it absolutely clear what i am doing but i will not cower in the darkness i will not let government tell me what to do and yes we are going with the aim of overthrowing the government. It has become obsolete. It is an anachronism in, in 2013 that we still believe as human beings that we should be organizing society by coercion and violence and force of a central authority rather than as free, beautiful, independent human beings who are capable of getting along by persuasion rather than coercion. And what we are doing is marking the high watermark of government on Independence Day 2013. And this is it. This is the beginning of the end for government, for this idea that this is how society should be organized, that, that this monopoly on violence, that this, this destructive Leviathan has any right to exist among free, enlightened people. And in this day and age, when we have the tools, we have the information, we are able to see past the propaganda, to sit back and endorse this system, to cower, to, to say that the status quo is somehow acceptable, seems antithetical to every principle of liberty that I have ever stood for. Well, Adam, I've never seen you this focused or on fire. You definitely know you've crossed the Rubicon now. Historically, uh, looking at this, this is the stuff that history is made of, what you're doing right now. For me to get up here on air and declare that a second American revolution was needed last year, a uh, intellectual revolution at the state level, but if the feds try to block it, then we have a right to uh, defend ourselves. This is the stuff of Lexington and Concord. Uh, we're beginning to enter uh, the edge of that zone but i've got to ask you to quantify this specifically so the corporatist globalist press the collaborator press the occupation press uh, the sympathizer press does not uh, take out of context what you're saying i want you to quantify for everyone out there what you mean by this is an armed revolt and we mean to overthrow the government let me stop you do you mean overthrow the idea with civil disobedience and break the will uh, of the corrupt establishment that they have a monopoly of force peacefully. Because when you use the terms armed revolt, when you use the terms overthrow the government, I would say checkmate the illegitimate occupiers that outside of law are saying we don't have a second amendment when the Supreme Court's already ruled DC is in violation and people have a right to carry guns there. Is that what yes. you're saying? Alex, already it is checkmate for government. It is game over. We have put them in a lose-lose situation. There's nothing they can do to rescue themselves from the situation when enough of their victims have realized that government is a racket. What I am suggesting the revolution really consists of is the withdrawing of our material support for government. That is a tax revolt. That is open resistance and rebellion when the government tries to force its will upon you. That means that we stand up to unjust authority in whatever way that we see fit. When it comes to violence, it is always an inferior inferior solution to peaceful means of resisting. And we hope that we can accomplish this entire revolution peacefully, that we can evolve past this phase of human society where we thought that government was necessary. But should it be necessary, we have to make it clear and put government on notice. 
that we will use physical force when necessary and when appropriate to defend ourselves. I'm very glad that we haven't come quite to that situation yet, but the government's reaction to what we do on Independence Day may yet prove that to be necessary. I hope they are not going to put us in that kind of situation where violent resistance is appropriate. I would rather have the officers that we will be facing decide that they are going to honor their oaths, that they are going to stand down, that they would rather be with the people than with the government. And as you said, it's already illegitimate. All we're doing is proving that and demonstrating that. And when we are able to march through that city armed, we will show that the government fears the people, not the other way around, and liberty will be restored. We have breaking news at Infowars.com. U.S. Senator says Big Sis is buying up ammo to dry up supply in Hoff. I believe it's intentional. Well, well yes, they've now uh, our story that's been up on uh, Drudge over the weekend uh, is now confirming that they're going out to all the big manufacturers and asking if they can buy millions of bullets within just a few weeks' notice uh, from them. Uh, and we have the video of Inhofe uh, up there on the site uh, breaking all of that down. So I'll just uh, tell uh, the crew to uh, get that audio. So coming up in the next segment, we can point out with Senator Inhofe is covering and saying, let me say this, Adam, and then let you make any other points you want to make. I, I admire courage instinctively. I mean, I mean, who, who doesn't? Um, and again, obviously, I've been asked, let's be conservative, 500 times or more in, in 18 years on air to have the armed march on Washington uh, to, to, you know, go exercise our Second Amendment and to show them who's boss. Uh, we see the government buying billions of rounds of ammo, 7,000 plus anti-mine tanks. They're dug in. They know they're committing crimes. They know that, that, that their time is short. So I understand that they're in the wrong and literally an alien, foreign, private Federal Reserve operation. But when we're starting to get such big inroads in the info war, uh, I always say to people that want to get an armed war going that I don't see that going well uh, in the midterm or the short term, and I would like to try to have a velvet revolution, as I think you would like. Uh, so, so, so what do you say on that front? Power seeds nothing without demand, and as Thomas Sowell said, it's amazing how much panic one honest man can spread among a multitude of hypocrites. I think that's what this is exposing. I think simply changing the conversation here, putting the government in a lose-lose situation, is a huge victory for liberty. And we are going to do whatever it takes to ensure that this event is safe and peaceful, unless the government decides that it's not going to be. And if it turns out that all we end up with is a rally on the Virginia side of the river, we will have at least shown that free people are not welcome in the nation capital and hopefully put the government on notice that there are increasing numbers of people who are realizing this, who are waking up, who are tuning into alternative media like yourself, like Adam versus the man, who are realizing that the government doesn't have their best interests at heart. And that alone is a huge victory. So I think anything that we can do in this in this fight, anything that we can do to move humanity forward, to, to get the ball rolling, I think we are coming to an important turning point historically as, as you you know compared what we are seeing here with this event to the events of the American Revolution. I'm, I'm, I'm quite flattered to hope that uh, the, the, to think that there are people who are recognizing the significance of what we're doing. But even beyond the destiny of the United States of America, we are talking about our destiny as a species. And I can't imagine sure. that we are going to evolve to this point and then see that we are going to keep this government thing going and we are not going to get past this. So I, I, as part of that process, uh, I'm just honored to be in a position where I get to do something about it. I'm really honored to have your support in this. And it is incredible to see the outpouring of support that we've had online for this. And it looks like we are going to have more than enough of the, the numbers that we want to have a critical mass to make this a success. Now, Adam, uh, expanding on that, I get historically you have the right to do this. And I want to punch up the Declaration of Independence for TV viewers that it's our right, it's our duty. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object invents a design to reduce them under absolute despotism or under a design of despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which uh, constrains them uh, to alter their forms and their former systems of government. 
and it just goes into the tyranny uh, of the uh, King of England. And we now are under banker rule where $85 billion a month is given to foreign banks and Warren Buffett. Uh, we are now under a kleptocracy of lawlessness. Uh, my only issue is that I think when I first heard about this about 45 minutes ago on air, I was like, I, Adam's a good guy, but I have a bad feeling. But I think it's the same bad feeling of the big bullies waiting for you at the end of school. But yeah. once, but 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 once the fight starts, you feel good going home that you stood up to him, even if you got your nose bloodied. You know he got the same thing. I just don't want a physical war to start because I see us incrementally starting to win the hearts and minds. So I hope that this doesn't go bad or something. You know doesn't happen. But you know that's the way it is. We need to trust in God. Trust in trust in providence. Trust in the universe. Uh, you know, bending towards justice. What will you say to those that will say Adam is a provocateur, Adam is a fed, a uh, Adam, uh, you know, is only doing this for publicity, like a mercenary, B because obviously that's already being said. What do you say to those people? I'm a provocateur for liberty. And Alex, I have to tell you, when I was getting on that airplane to go to Fallujah in 2004 with the Marines, I felt, I think, a similar sensation to what you're describing and if it wasn't for the great false bravado and conviction that i was imbued with by the propaganda that led me to that point i would not have even been in that position in the first place Wait, hold that thought recap that when we come back uh we've got adam versus the man.com adam kokesh on with us i'm alex jones this is obviously massive news that is breaking right now in detail here at infowars I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Adam Kokesh is with us for the rest of this segment. I'm going to let him go here in about 10 minutes. He's got to get ready for his own show in a couple hours. AdamVersusTheMan.com is his website. And uh, he, of course, has been a, a prominent libertarian activist in the last six, seven years and has run for Congress, amongst other things, uh, and has also done a lot of media events that have drawn a lot of attention to tyranny. Uh, but I have to tell you that what he is setting out on now uh, will probably have the establishment try to intimidate everybody and come down everybody, which will actually backfire against them. Uh, I had some of the crew, Adam, saying, you know, are you guys going to have ammo in your guns? Yes. So you're going to be locked and loaded? Absolutely. Yeah, that'll we, are, mm -hmm. we are asserting the right to be armed and to apply deadly force. And it's really one of the most overlooked points in all of the debates about gun control, in, it, it, which is that we are only alive as, as human beings because our fellow human beings want us to be alive. Human life is so very, very fragile and so easy to snuff out. The idea that, that somehow that's going to be changed by a law or an edict from Washington is absurd. And to, to think that you've, you've heard this point before, you know, that, well, if you take away the guns, the people that really want to kill other people will find another way. And it's absolutely true. But we are asserting this particular right as laid out in the Constitution. And I, I think it's, it's really sad to think that, that everybody goes, oh, my gosh, they're, they're, they're going to have guns at this event. Therefore, you know, therefore, there's, there's going to be violence. Well, as we've seen from uh, Kent State, which gets raised uh, fairly frequently in the conversation around this right now, it doesn't matter if you're armed or unarmed facing government. If they feel like shooting you, they are, they are going to shoot you. And we are going to do what we always do and ensure that we are not giving them any excuse. But it, if anything, I feel safer being surrounded by fellow armed patriots and, and Americans who, who believe that, that there is value 
in, in fighting for at least the principles this country was was founded on. And if only through our collective victimhood at the hands of the American government believe that there is something worth fighting for in this country than to be unarmed facing down the same police force. Well, look, this is civil rights at its core, just like black folks going in and sitting at lunch counters saying, I'm not going to you know, get the food out the window anymore. I'm a human or going in the bathroom uh, or get sitting at the front of the bus. Back then, that was incredibly radical. It was th Those people were demonized. But later, the truth was self-evident. And the fact that it is the law, you can be armed in a group in Virginia. They follow the Constitution. The fact that D.C., what the Heller decision is a couple years old, they still are in violation of it. Uh, yep. The fact that you are in the right... And, and imagine how backwards it is that government can be armed, but it's saying you can't be when the right of arrest is a citizen right where we then under state charter create cities and then we decide to hire police to be our servants via the citizen's right of arrest to be professional citizens to do it as our servants. That's why they're called servants. Now they're authorities officials and I saw a poll out where 86 percent of police are totally pro second amendment and most cops I talk to at open carry rallies we've covered are, are love it because they get it a real criminal is going to have it hidden they're not going to see the bullet coming they get it so the problem is as you know DC police uh, are 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 even worse than New York police and I've been all over the country uh, they are so arrogant. They are so aggressive. They are so rude. I mean, you live there. You're around it all oh, the yeah. time that there is no telling what these monsters will do. And faced with real people, uh, wow. I mean, I'm saying, Katie, bar the door. Get ready to be called by every media outlet out there since Drudge picked up your story. And, and, and you know, let's say you've got two minutes on CNN, not a big audience, but they're legends in their own mind. It'll then get picked up on all the other channels. Mm -hmm. Together, the mainstream media is big. Let's say you are on two minutes or, or you're in the room with Piers Morgan tomorrow night. I, in fact, I bet they call you there. You're, you're in the room with the slime bag Piers Morgan, who only has 400,000 viewers now. It's dropped by about 200,000. He's, he's a nobody. There's probably a 2 million listing right now. But still, by confronting <laughs> him, it'll be put on Jay Leno everywhere else, and then you will reach hundreds of millions when it airs everywhere worldwide. You're, you've got two minutes with Piers Morgan, what do you say to him? If freedom scares you so much, why don't you move to North Korea? Is that enough? I think that's really sad to see that in this country there are people who would rather uh, change it to, to, to go to some vision that they want to impose through government. It's really disgusting that that's what this country has turned into, that our government has become not a, a mechanism of the will of the people, if it ever was, but a tool of the elites to control the rest of us. And they get it by being able to convince us that we need government, that the government is still the will of the people, that we all have some say. And if you believe that and you want to take the side of the the government over the people, then by all means, please do. You'll be on the wrong side of the firing line when the shooting starts. But that's not what this event is all about. And when Piers Morgan wants to try to think that, that, that you know, this is this is how he can uh, he, he can kiss up to the, to the to his new overlords now that he's on the other side of the pond. He's wrong because the power rests with the people. And Alex, just to what you said earlier about the uh, law enforcement attitude, you're absolutely correct that they have found uh, how to hire really some of the worst in the country when it comes to cities like New York and D.C. especially. But what we are going to be doing is finding out which ones are, are oath keepers and oath breakers, and that's really important. But there's another wrinkle to this story in the law enforcement reaction on the side of supporting this event. And from what we've seen in the comments from those who claim to be law enforcement, opinions are a little split. There are some who, who, who are made nervous by this. We haven't had anyone say, I'm a law enforcement officer. You should not do this. And I want to really point that out. I have not had a single law enforcement officer contact me as, as such and tell me that this should not happen. We've had a lot of support from law enforcement officers who are specially invited to attend armed however they see fit. And we have seen an incredible amount of support. We've had law enforcement officers say that it's a great idea. We've had law enforcement officers say they'll be joining us with arms. And we've had law enforcement officers say they'll be joining us entirely disarmed. So they are welcome in doing this. And this just goes to show that the people who are, are supposedly the servants of the people, but really we know the servants of the government, uh, they are not re just ready to, to fall in line. 
line. And this is really important for the, the peaceful revolution that we're working towards, Alex, is that we ensure the enforcement class of government knows what's really going on and knows what it means to stand with the people. Well, my first knee-jerk reaction was Adam Kokesh is a good guy, but I have a bad feeling about this. But uh, you got cut off by the break. Restart the story um, about Fallujah because I want to air that on my nightly news tonight. I think that's very powerful. Start over because I was talking about sure. You know, you know that feeling of the bully that's flunked three grades, weighs eighty pounds more than you, and beats everybody up. He's waiting for you at the end of school, and and I remember growing up, and I could have gone out the back of the school. But over and over again, something about it said, I'm going to go ahead and go out the front and I'm going to find him. And then that bad feeling disappeared right when I stood up to him. So when I say bad feeling, I just hate giving the enemy the chance to spend things. But you know what? Fortune favors the bold. And there is a tide in the affairs of men when taken at the flood leads on to fortune. Julius Caesar, our fortune is liberty. And we're men, too, just like them. And we don't seek power, we don't seek tyranny, and it freaks them out when we actually uh, begin to reverse things. So, uh, man, I, I mean, my mind is all over the place on this, but uh, my, my spirit likes it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, my gut uh, is concerned about it. But, but whatever happens, happens. Tell the Fallujah story. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Alex. And I did share some of that feeling with you when the idea first leapt into my mind and I asked my audience if, if they thought it was a good idea and I received an overwhelmingly positive response. But it's similar to that feeling when you're getting on an airplane going to Fallujah as I did in 2004 with the Marines. And despite all of the courage of my convictions imbued in me by the propaganda that led me to support the occupation of Iraq and what we were doing, what I was misled into thinking was cleaning up our mess somehow, which was actually participating in, a, in, in the, the deaths of a million and a half Iraqis as a result of the American invasion and occupation there. And with all of that, I still had some of this feeling. And it's interesting now, in contrast, doing this, not only do I feel much safer, but the courage of my convictions are so overwhelming compared to what I felt going into Fallujah, knowing that I'm doing the right thing, knowing that the people who are standing with me in this are doing the right thing. All of those negative feelings are, 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 are cast aside when you've done your research, when you've done your homework, when you understand the dynamics, you understand what's at stake. I'm not particularly brave. It may be bold what I am doing here, but I feel that I've made a calculated decision, and I'm not particularly brave, Alex. I don't think that I have the... Uh, depending on how you would define the word, I simply have the intelligence to think things through and understand the calculated risks that I'm taking. Well, plus, I, I mean, you don't want to just, I mean, this is my feeling. Uh, uh, tell me if you concur. I don't want to just sit here as a spectator while yes. classic tyranny takes over and is arming to the teeth against me and in all the federal training manuals, clear treason saying gun owners, returning veterans, libertarians, conservatives in the fetters that we're the new terrorist and Army manuals, let's put it on screen, uh, that's talk about re-education camps. They even use that term. I, I mean, uh, really well, the question Alex, is, why have we waited this long? Yes, I have the answer, and that is exactly what I wanted to share with you in regards to your story about the bully. And I know there are a lot of people listening to this right now who are thinking the same thing. Oh my gosh, am I, is this, is this what I'm doing? I'm being, I'm being turned loose by the authorities to the victim, to, to be a victim of a bully that who's, who's 80 pounds heavier than me. Am I going into a, to a, to a trap? And the answer is absolutely not. And you know, this as well as anyone, Mr. Jones, that the, while the government may behave like a bully, it is a tiny speck of insignificance compared to the power of we the people. And if anything, we are the ones who are far favored to win this fight if you want to take away and see who has more power, those of us who are going to be marching on Independence Day or those who are going to be trying to stop us. Yeah, there was a big editorial came out. Guys, will you type this in? Uh, editorialist comes out and says, I saw it this morning, put NRA members in camps. And this is the type of garbage that we see going on. And I'm trying to find the article because I want to show people, uh, you know, the image of the NRA as a giant ogre with a club and the government bowing down in fear. But that's actually true. We are a 2,000 pound ogre with huge spiked teeth and a huge club compared to a chicken neck nobody, except we're not an ogre. We are enlightened with liberty and freedom and decency, and, and they should be scared. Well, Alex, after seeing the NRA's 
politicization, to put it kindly. I'm much more of a fan of, of gun owners of America, but you're absolutely correct. And if they did feel the need to put up a fence to keep all of us gun owners in, and it happened to take up the entire United States of America, except for the little part around D.C., and they had a big fence erected around the District of Criminals in order to keep the rest of us out. As long as they're keeping the government creeps and those who wish to control us in, I'd be more than happy with that. Well, again, I mean, I am for open carry uh, everywhere because a right on exercise is lost. Uh, I just at a certain level need to tell people that there is a chance they could set something up, set off a bomb, blame it on us, you name it. Uh, I think people should just consciously know the dangers, but the danger is much greater to just sit here on our butt and, 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 and not Thank get you. on the offense. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And that's the greatest thing to, to be able to step back and put this in perspective. When the government wants you to think this is dangerous, this is a risk. What's the alternative? Sitting at home, letting them come to get you, let it, letting the next Boston bombing occur, letting, letting them continue to, to trample all over the rights and freedoms of the American people, that you think that's going to be safer by comparison than standing up? Because history would say otherwise. Well, I want to say this to all the listeners, uh, and we've chronicled it. That was another major syndicated column just in one paper we just showed earlier. Uh, we'll put it back on screen saying, put us in camps and then i just showed on screen at army.mil the resettlement plan where it says our social security numbers how to process this how to take our photos how to break the families up it's hundreds of pages that we broke down where the military is training and that's why they're waking up by the way to put us in camps how did the establishment think the military wouldn't turn against them i ran into a lot of veterans this weekend when i was up in um, or last week in hot springs arkansas and they told me 30 to 40 percent, it's FM 3-39.40, internment resettlement camp operations. And it talks about re-education camps. It uses that Soviet term. And they, and they said, listen, when I was in two years ago, 35 percent were in. Or when my buddy was in last year, 45 percent were in. I ran into people in uniform. They said, oh, everybody I know is awake. What are you seeing with all the veterans? I know there's a lot of veterans that work on your show, you know, recent Iraq veterans. What are, because, and then, and then Homeland Security comes out and says, you're the terrorist now, returning veterans because they know you're awake. I think they've overplayed their hand. And then they're oh, yes. all over the news saying, we don't need to arrest Alex Jones. He's a crazy. And, and so they cuddle up and believe their own propaganda. And, and, and I think are showing their hand. We're not a bunch of poor Russian peasants, you know, that had already lived under slavery. And, and by the way, the communists could barely beat them. They fought hard. We're not a bunch of Germans that are just going to follow orders. I'm not knocking Germans. I mean, I hope the New World Order gets. They've bit off more than they can chew here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We are going to turn the tide. And as you've seen from the growth of the organization Oath Keepers and, and from the evidence that you present here and from all of the feedback that I've got from members of the Adam versus the Man audience that are uh, heavily, uh, heavily leaning with, uh, we, or at least uh, we have more than our fair share of active duty military personnel, uh, veterans, and of law enforcement officers because they're very concerned with these issues. And for the people that wake up from on the inside, it's very powerful to see that there's a whole other way of thinking on the outside. And this, I, I can only hope that in the, in the greater picture, as, as I'm sure you're, you're keen to see that this will have some historical significance, it may serve as a turning point for those within the system, those enforcements, uh, in, uh, those enforcers of government, the members of the enforcement class, for them to see that there is an alternative. There is a, a means to disobedience. There is a, a calling to the higher law of the Constitution, if not the higher law of natural rights, to respect our fellow human beings rather than to simply be obedient in enforcers of the edicts of politicians. And if anything, I, I really truly hope that this event can serve as a catalyst for the revolution that is already occurring in the minds of so many enforcers. Well, let's be clear. They can crush stuff that they stage and then claim they've defeated the Patriot movement. That's all a hoax. They can get Bostonites to come out with their hands up because they ran a media hoax, but that's one time. They're not, every time they get a chance, Boston, Katrina, they take the guns. The military, as you know, trains to take the guns. If 35, 40, 45 percent of active duty were awake years ago, the numbers I'm getting from Fort Hood, it's more like 60. What are you getting from the vets you know? I mean, how explosive is this? 
Well, I think in the veteran community, people are much more keen to wake up because they have a little less at stake. You get out of the military, it's a little easier to see past the propaganda that you're surrounded by. So I think it's very important right now for veterans to be reaching out to any active duty troops they may know. We specially invite active duty soldiers and veterans to join us on this march as well on, on Independence Day. And and I really think that there's there's an important bridge being, uh, you know. Absolutely. No, no, this is the restoration of the Republic against the Marxist globalist revolution. Adam Kokesh, you got a lot of guts, and guts is enough. Ask yourselves, what are you doing in this time of great challenge? What are you doing to unlock minds?